But for all the dangers ahead, few are felt more acutely than people's sense of financial insecurity. We've been pounded by a series of once-in-a-generation shocks, the worst international financial crisis since the Great Depression in the 1930s, the first global pandemic since the Spanish flu in 1918, the biggest energy shock since the 1970s, global forces, yet they are hitting our living standards here at home. We've been pounded by a series of once-in-a-generation shocks, says Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, whilst deliberately avoiding Brexit in his list of things battering the UK economy, right in the middle of a news and data deluge on how Brexit is battering the UK economy. And not a single journalist in the room thought it worthy of challenge. And it's not the first time the Prime Minister has sought to take us all for fools by deliberately avoiding Brexit when listing things which have and continue to batter the UK economy. Covid, war in Ukraine, inflation, all caused major disruption, drove up the cost of doing business. By almost every economic and financial measure, the hard Brexit, which has been entirely self-inflicted on the UK economy by this insane government, has been disastrous for the UK. And the Prime Minister knows it. So why are journalists allowing him to repeatedly omit Brexit from his list of things which continue to batter the UK economy? I think everyone recognises the difficult times that we've been through as a country over the past couple of years. We've had the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Chancellor Jeremy Hunt has adopted exactly the same tactic in the hope that again no one will notice. You talk about living standards. What has actually happened since 2010? Uh, they've gone up in real terms by about £1,700 for the average family. But obviously when you have a pandemic and an energy crisis, they're going to take a hit. Oh, what? Uh, wins elections because <clears throat> the British public are very smart is if they can see a government has taken difficult decisions to sort out problems and they know that we've had a pandemic we've had an energy crisis now of course the pandemic and Russia's illegal war in Ukraine has had an impact on the UK's economy as has rising energy prices and yes those were issues the government had no control over but Bloomberg has calculated that Brexit is costing the UK £100 billion a year in lost output. That's roughly £40 billion less for the government to invest in the UK. Just think about that. It's £40 billion less to invest in our hospitals and our schools and public services that we all rely on. It's one of the reasons for the Chancellor's anemic budget. UK business is now being crucified by additional red tape and costs which have been inflicted on it by the government's hard Brexit. And both the Chancellor and Prime Minister know it. Businesses say they feel like they're banging their heads against a brick wall over improving trade with the European Union. That's according to the British Chambers of Commerce, which says its members are still struggling with the UK's post-Brexit trading arrangements. Brexit is still proving the biggest headache for British businesses, ranking even higher than Russia's war in Ukraine, Covid or rising energy costs. New post-Brexit UK border controls, which came into force in April, are estimated to cost British businesses a staggering £2 billion and will likely fuel higher inflation. If that's not bad enough, the UK goods trade has suffered its steepest five-year fall on record, with economists saying this highlights how Brexit has reduced flows both into and out of Britain. Which isn't exactly surprising given the Conservative government is likely the first in history to negotiate a trade deal which involved walling itself off from a trading block made up of its nearest neighbours, making it harder both to sell your stuff and buy their stuff. But both the Prime Minister and his Chancellor continue to take us all for fools by refusing to mention it. And this insanity was graphically illustrated following the Chancellor's spring budget, when he excitedly hopped from one UK news show to another, telling us all this. The OBR says because of the decisions that I've taken, GDP will be 0.7% higher than it would otherwise have been. But what the Chancellor failed to mention is the same report also said this. We continue to expect that Brexit will reduce the UK's potential GDP by 4% in the long run by lowering the trade intensity of the economy. That's right, whilst the Chancellor ran jubilantly from one UK news show to another, telling viewers, completely unchallenged, this. 
The OBR says because of the decisions that I've taken, GDP will be 0.7% higher than it would otherwise have been. The OBR, that's the Office for Budget Responsibility, say in the same report that the hard Brexit championed by the Prime Minister will reduce the UK's potential GDP by 4% in the long run by lowering the trade intensity of the economy. The OBR's analysis chimes with that of the Bank of England by showing that a long-term squeeze on the country's economic potential from Brexit is playing out as they'd feared. And both the Chancellor and the Prime Minister continue to take the public for fools by deliberately omitting all this from their list of things battering the UK economy. And journalists are largely letting them get away with it. Until politicians from all sides of the House are willing to be honest with the public on this issue, how can there be any real possibility of fixing the UK's battered and broken economy? And what's worse, they all know it. And what happened with the pandemic and what happened also with the war in Ukraine makes it very difficult to pull out actual strong conclusions and e economists argue about the effects. 